all I need to be happy is a rope to skip. I'm serious. I'll tell you why. Because a little jump rope can turn any bad situation into a real fun time. I learned this from the last time I went trick-or-treating. I'd spent the whole day perfecting my Harley Quinn costume, but the act just didn't feel complete until I picked up my jump rope and started skipping it. The backyard was my jump rope world championship stage, and everyone was thoroughly dazzled by my moves. Well, everyone except Cat. She came by a couple hours after sundown and immediately started cramping my style. Come on, Tracy. Let's go trick-or-treating before all the good candy's gone. My name is Harley. Can't you see? Whatever, weirdo. Let's go. I'd rather stay here and skip rope all night. Your Catwoman costume isn't even good. It's enough for candy. I'm not crazy like you. So you only dressed up for candy? That's kind of lame. Well, it's also fun to just show off. Hmm, you've got a point. I guess I'll go. Good. Now leave the rope. Harley Quinn doesn't skip rope. Ugh, fine. That poser ended up dragging me all over the neighborhood that night. She took all of my candy and when she got scared, she made me walk her all the way home. She lives an entire mile away from me too. So inconsiderate. I never even told her what happened. I was walking home all alone super late that night and I didn't even have my jump rope on a drag. But then I noticed this older boy who was dressed as the Joker had come up behind me and started following me. I didn't recognize him. And all of the Jokers, he decided that Jared Leto was the way to go. Flame. I turned around and faced him. Who are you? Why, I'm the Joker, of course. Your one true love. Hmm. Why's that? Don't you know? We're meant to be together. Harley Quinn always falls for the Joker. Haven't you seen the new movie? I dumped you. You're gross. That made him mad. This ain't the movie, sweetheart. I'm telling you, the Joker always gets his Harley Quinn. He then pulled out a knife. He swung at me, but I ran. I thought I'd outrun him, so I ran into the woods to cut across to my house. Boy, that was a bad idea. He caught up with me quick as soon as I got into the trees. He tackled me and pinned me down into the dirt. I screamed for help, but he put his hand over my mouth. Help! 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 Shh, baby girl. I'm just going to give you a little reminder that you belong to me. So be happy about it. I thought I was going to die. He sliced my forehead with a smiley face, real slow. It hurt so bad, but I couldn't move anything at all. He was on top of me and held me down. But when the blood ran down into my eyes, I freaked. I squirmed and flailed until I got just one leg loose from his restraint. Then I kneed him straight in the balls with all my might. He fell back shouting and dropped his knife, holding his hand on his crotch. I picked up the knife before he could react, gripped it real tight, and then plunged it right into his stupid eyeball. <laughs> oh, how those screams were music to my ears. No stopping now. I thought. So I got on him and took the knife out of his left eye and shoved it to the right. <laughs> then I stabbed him again and again until there was nothing left of his stupid wannabe face but pure carnage. He went limp, and I caught my breath. All I wanted to do was skip some friggin' rope. So now, you're gonna help me out. I raised the knife way up high with both hands and stuck it into his gut, then sliced all the way across his belly. I pried open all the skin and fat and exposed all the wonderful organic cordage within. I pulled out a nice long section of his small intestine and severed it with the blade. It was slippery, but it worked. I stood up and found my balance, then started doing what I wanted to do the whole time, skip rope. Now, don't you believe me when I tell you that skipping rope can make any situation better? Ha 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 
Halloween is no longer my cup of tea. While everyone storms out to celebrate on this particular day, I prefer to lock myself in my room and isolate from the world. Things weren't always like this. I used to party hard on Halloween just like everyone else. Last year was the year that changed everything for me. I live in a closed neighborhood where everyone knows everyone. For being the principal's daughter, I don't have anyone to call a friend at school. I'm the quiet nerd who had a huge crush on Eric, the most handsome guy at our school. The most popular girl, Ashley, tried her best to be his girlfriend, but Eric never asked her out. It was a week before Halloween. The entire town was lighting up to celebrate. Every store looked the same with the decorations of pumpkins and ghost masks. To cheer me up, my mom gave me money to buy costumes for the Halloween party that was about to take place at our town hall. Reluctantly, I got out of the house to look for suitable attire. I was checking out some witch costumes hung in the small store when I heard a familiar voice behind me. You'd make a cute witch. I turned around and blushed immediately. Eric was standing there with his killing smile. When I realized I'm supposed to reply to him, I got even more embarrassed for taking such a long pause. Um, what are you doing here? I just came to look for a costume. So, any plans for Halloween? Not exactly. Might attend the town hall party. Will you be there? I will be. Guess I'll see you there. He smiled again and left for the counter. My heartbeat got faster as I couldn't believe I just spoke to my crush and he even flirted with me. I kind of felt that he liked me too. I mean, if we hit it off somehow, maybe he would end up asking me to prom. My overthinking kicked in and I couldn't stop smiling. As time went by, Halloween fell hard on our town. Every post and tree had spooky green lanterns and various decor hanging on them. The town hall was also decked up as an old mansion. One evening, I was sitting near my window and enjoying the view outside, when I saw a figure standing under a bushy tree near the sidewalk. Due to the darkness, I couldn't see clearly at first, but then the figure came closer to a lamppost nearby. It was a man dressed as Edward Scissorhands. Believe it or not, his costume was remarkable. He painted his face excessively white, which made his eyes look wide. His hair made it look like he got electrocuted. He raised his freaky bony fingers crafted with sharp metal blades and started counting the stars in the sky. I said to myself, Whoa, someone took Halloween way too seriously. Just then, he looked at me. The paint on his face was so damn white, except for his eyes. I couldn't spot anything else. He waved at me in a very particular way. I closed the curtains instantly. I didn't care much about this as Halloween is the ideal time for freaks to show their true colors. After dinner, my parents got busy talking about the town hall party. As for me, I went into my room for a long-needed shut-eye. As I entered my room, I found my room window wide open. I clearly remembered closing it before going downstairs. I slowly walked towards it and discovered scratches on the wooden frame. It seemed like someone scraped the frame with a knife. And not just that, a foul odor was all over my room. I don't know why suddenly the image of Edward Scissorhands flashed in my mind. The street stood empty with no sign of that freak around. I checked every nook and corner of my room and became sure that no one was hiding in there. I locked the window again and went to bed. I'm generally a heavy sleeper, but I woke up hearing heavy breathing right next to my face. I opened my sleepy eyes. It took a while to adjust to the darkness in my room. I looked up and I could spot someone standing near the window. I couldn't see his face, but I could see sharp pointy fingers dangling in the air. A sound of metallic clinking echoed in the room every time the wind rushed in from my open window. What the hell? 
didn't I just lock it? I sprung on my bed and switched on the bedside lamp, but the man was gone. The window was locked and everything seemed like a bad dream. I blamed my mind for letting this weird guy take a toll on it and went back to sleep. The next morning, I went downstairs for breakfast, only to hear my mom yelling at my dad. You always end up losing things in this house. Those are my gardening tools. I couldn't make out what was going on. My dad yelled back saying, I didn't take them, Molly. I swear. Try to remember where you kept them. After asking them what was going on, my mom told me that her gardening tools were missing from the garage. I know she kept her grass cutting equipment in there. It seemed weird to me because who would steal a bunch of old cutting tools? Was it Edward's scissor hands? As time went by, this mystery got buried, and we all came to the conclusion that they just got lost somehow. But somehow, I knew that Edward's scissor hands guy had something to do with all of this. The morning of Halloween, bad thoughts kept circulating through my mind. I knew I'd see that guy again tonight. I thought it'd best be to skip the party, but then again, Eric's invitation was too tempting. I got ready and went out. Kids were running around dressed like goblins, ghosts, and other fictional avatars. I locked the door as my parents had already left for the town hall. A group of kids approached me saying, trick or treat. I handed them some candy and one of them said, are you a bad witch or a good witch? I laughed at his innocence and shrugged my shoulders. The kids moved to the next house and I started walking towards the town hall. As I walked, it felt like someone was following me. After five minutes of walking with this feeling, I finally got to the town hall. I could see the entire town gathered there. Ashley was standing near the entrance, dressed as a bloody nurse. She came up to me and said, You think Eric loves you, huh? <sighs> Poor baby. He's gonna use you and then move on to someone else like he always does. Without waiting for my reply, she went inside. I stood there like a statue, but Eric was so nice to me. This girl must be jealous. While contemplating these thoughts, my eyes searched for Eric. I got inside and everyone was partying and dancing. Blue and green neon lights created a vibrant atmosphere. Jack-o'-lanterns, cobwebs, and fake bats were everywhere. I saw Eric standing near the drinks counter. He dressed up as Count Dracula and still looked strikingly handsome as always. I was about to walk towards him when Edward Scissorhands appeared in front of me from nowhere. He lifted his multiple scissored hands and told me to go back. His wide eyes lurked at me while he moved his pointy finger from left to right, gesturing. No. What the hell is wrong with you? He didn't answer me and just stood there staring. I ignored him and walked past. Seeing Eric's smile made my heart melt right away. We talked and danced and laughed. I was having the time of my life. Do you want to get out of here? Eric said. I agreed and we went out through the back door of the town hall. He started taking me into the woods and said he wanted to spend some alone time with me. I expect us to kiss and take things from there, but as we got close to a lake, he stopped. This place was quite far from the town hall, and on that moonlit night, I felt that I shouldn't be here. Um, this is a really weird place to be on Halloween. <laughs> Don't be scared. We can be alone now. We sat down near the riverbank and Eric held my hand. My heartbeat got faster and faster, as the thought of my first kiss being with my long-time crush was too much for me to handle. Suddenly, I heard footsteps behind me and turned around. Two boys came out from the darkness and gathered around us. Wait, what's going on? Well, can't we all have some fun? You know, why don't you show us what's underneath that witch costume? Suddenly, I realized that Ashley was right. Eric's face looked like a demon to me. He was smiling in a very disturbing way while the other two guys started to come at me. 
As soon as I realized that they were going to take advantage of me, I screamed and fainted on the ground. I came to a while later and I found myself lying in mud right next to the three freshly murdered victims. Yes, Eric and his friends were dead. There were cuts and slashes all over their skin like someone carved it with a knife and scissors. Their stomachs were slashed open and their eyes were bulging out from the sockets in horror. I heard a yawn behind me and turned around. <sighs> it was him. Edward Scissorhands. Blood was dripping from his metallic fingers and for the first time, he had a huge grin on his face. He waved at me and I ran for my life. Our town shook in fear after the cops found those mutilated bodies by the lake. Police are still interrogating everyone. They came to my house this morning, but I lied to them. I told them that I never saw Eric at that party. I couldn't tell them about this psycho killer because no one would believe me. And not just that. When I woke up this morning, I found a note left near my window. It read, I'll be sleeping in your closet until you need me again. <laughs> <laughs> 